Imagine you measured the petal lengths of 50 flowers of a certain species. Here is the ECDF from those measurements. From what you have learned, you can compute the mean of those 50 measurements, and I'll annotate it on the ECDF with a vertical line. That is useful, but there are millions of these flowers on the planet. Can you tell me the mean petal length of all of the flowers of that species? If I measure another 50 flowers, I get a similar but quantitatively different set of measurements. Can you tell me what value I would get for the mean petal length if I measured yet another 50 flowers? We just don't have the language to do that without probability. Probabilistic reasoning allows us to describe uncertainty. Though you can't tell me exactly what the mean of the next 50 petal lengths you measure will be, you could say, that it is more probable to be close to what you got in the first 50 measurements than it is to be much greater. We can go ahead and repeat the measurements over and over again. We see from the vertical lines that we expect the mean to be somewhere between 4.5 and 5 centimeters. This is what probabilistic thinking is all about. Given a set of data, you describe probabilistically what you might expect if those data were acquired again and again and again and again. This is the heart of statistical inference. It is the process by which we go from measured data to probabilistic conclusions about what we might expect if we collected the same data again. Your data speak in the language of probability. Let's do a few exercises exploring these ideas, and then we'll come back and learn how to start speaking this probabilistic language.